What's good people? This video is to guide you through the process of deciding whether or not an MPC 2000 XL might be right for you and at what price point you might want to pick one up at. So the basic model um, here I just have is 2 meg of RAM, uh, the floppy disk drive, that was kind of the standard entry level model when they were first introduced by Akai. And uh, just through my research on eBay and on Craigslist, picking up one of these used, you're probably going to look at spending somewhere between two and three hundred dollars depending on um, the condition and sometimes any other options that might be included on that. Uh, next we get into a model that has some upgrades uh, an internal zip disk drive or a SCSI zip drive uh, 32 meg of RAM which is the maximum amount of RAM and the eight individual outputs along with the digital in and out um, and just depending on the options that that model might have, you're probably looking at spending somewhere between three and five hundred dollars. Once again, depending on the options and conditions. And then next, we're going to look at a fully loaded model, and that's one that's going to have the MCD drive, uh, the CF reader, the effects board. Once again, the max amount of RAM, and the uh, eight output with the digital in and out. And um, here you're probably going to spend uh, at least $500 or more, just depending on the options and conditions. And like I said, this is an exact science, just kind of what I've seen through the years on the used market, mainly eBay. Um, special edition models, there were three different models. Uh, these were just cosmetic changes to the casing. They work exactly the same. They don't add any features. Uh, they're just a little more rare than the beige and blue. And then here's a list of what to avoid. Uh, definitely bad screens because those are hard to find on the aftermarket. Tack switches, while they're easy to, they're cheap to change, but they require some soldering. And bad sensors on the pads because those are expensive. Now just a couple tips for finding a good deal. Um, maybe a seller that says the unit powers up but can't get any sounds out of it they might not um, be listing the unit for quite as much or also maybe an internal zip drive that has a disk stuck in it because you can always just uh, put a new disk drive in there and that's fairly inexpensive to do um, so that's just a couple ideas you know when looking on eBay or Craigslist and I also want to give you guys a couple tips um, with some of the options like with the eight outs that's pretty obvious you can see that but to check to see what the RAM, how much RAM it has in it, and also the uh, effects board. Here's just a couple things. If you do get a chance to try it out, you would want to go to Shift and Sample, and then go to the time there, and you're going to hit the Open Window button, and that will actually tell you the amount of uh, RAM it has installed. So if you get to uh, you know, check it out at the store, or have the buyer on eBay maybe send you a picture if they don't know. And then to figure out the uh, effects card if that's installed, you would go to Shift and Mixer and go there, the last button, Effects Edit. And there, that pulls up the effects screen. There in the effects card installed, it will give you a message saying the effects card is not installed if it does not have it. So thanks for watching. Peace.